I'm Tom and this is my review of the 2014 PrintaBot Simple Maker's Kit. Now of course the name Maker's Kit implies that it comes as a kit with all the parts necessary for you to build the machine. I did not actually build this one. Uh, this is a printer from Niels Hitze of 3 dedingede who also stained the wooden parts of the printer to give it that cool dark color. The build process basically boils down to using a hex key and going through three packs of zip ties. So anyone who can assemble IKEA furniture should also manage to build the printabout simple. The 2014 version of the simple, internally called 1405, introduced a couple changes over the previous version 1401. The biggest one is the inclusion of a contactless probe as the Z end stop which means that you'll never have to fuss with the alignment of the print bed again. And in fact, the printabout simple doesn't even provide a way to align the aluminum print bed. Now this is not a heated bed and if you want to upgrade to one, you'll have to find and swap out a couple other components yourself. The other change they introduced was proper GT2 belts instead of the fishing line and sandpaper solution for the X and Y drives they had used before. Huge upgrade. Now, to be totally honest, the first time I saw the printabot simple, I was pretty shocked. I knew that the layout of the simple's axes wasn't going to make for a particularly stiff motion platform. But as everything is being held in place by zip ties and those stretch over time, the printerbot was one of the flimsiest and weakest printers I had ever seen. You can tighten up the zip ties a bit more and risk breaking the wood. And it makes the axis a bit stiffer, but doesn't completely solve that problem. Then the Z coupler is a type that really shouldn't be used for that application. And it's also not gripping onto the lead screw particularly well. So of course this introduces Z wobble. You can play around with how you insert the lead screw into the coupler, but it's never going to be a perfect solution like this. Then there's the wiring. Now you should be able to tell that this isn't the perfect wiring solution. There's a whole bunch of them sticking out the back of the printer and where they lead into the motor and such, you can see them bending in the exact same spot with every move. Needless to say, this is not the proper way of doing reliable wiring and in fact this already took its toll on the cable for the Z-probe, which already suffered a cable break. Oh, and the whole printer smells like emollient from the wires, which makes it somewhat unsuitable as a desktop machine. But then it dawned on me, I'm not the target audience and the printerbot simple isn't perfect. And the folks at printerbot knew that perfect at that price point was impossible. Just look at what other companies tried to sell on Kickstarter and then compare how many of them managed to grow a successful business out of their concept and how many of them failed to deliver even their original Kickstarter pledges. I think it's pretty obvious which route Printabot took. Yes, many things aren't lining up perfectly and yes, the printer is already starting to get crooked under its own weight. But you know, that's not what counts for Printabot. I can see two goals that they had in mind with this design. Goal number one is enabling the user to start printing while taking away as many of the challenges and inconsistencies as possible that the user might run into. The top notch extruder and the inclusion of the Z-probe testified to that. Goal number two is being cheap. And when you look at the printabout simple, it is chock full of bright ideas that simply save printabout money that they can then use for better parts where it actually matters and for better customer service. Or, you know, for making the printer itself cheaper for you. Now, as far as the actual print quality goes that you get from this printer, well, it's pretty horrible at first. By default, the printer's axes are set way too responsive, which, combined with the weak mechanical structures, gets you some serious wobble, overshoot and ringing artifacts in your prints. But once you slow everything down by a good bit, which I'll show you how to do in this video down here, you'll actually get quite decent results from the simple. Of course, you can only print PLA, but that's the most common plastic anyways. The first thing you should print though is a fan shroud for the cooling fan. The default blowing style is somewhat ineffective for cooling PLA fast enough. 
Now, one thing you should also keep in mind when choosing a printer is what kind of company you're supporting. When you're buying a MakerBot, you know you're effectively funding Stratasys, who are trying to monopolize the consumer 3D printing market with vendor tie-ins and proprietary formats. Oh, and they're patenting everything they can get their hands on, effectively keeping the community from using their own inventions. Now, PrinterBot is a much friendlier company. For example, they are actively supporting open source projects like Alessandro Ranuccelli's Slicer project, but they are also supported by other open source companies like with Ultimaker's Cura software, which includes machine profiles for every printer bot ever released. And because the printer bot and the printer board mainboard are open source and use open source software, you can modify them as much as you'd like, if you want to. So is this a printer that I would recommend? Well, it depends as it always does. Uh, if you're on a really tight budget and just want something to print, sure, go for it. The simple isn't perfect out of the box, but it has some room for improvement and it's a good way to get your feet wet with 3D printing. Plus, it's probably the only printer in that price segment that isn't completely vaporware. <coughs> Maki box! Nah. The 2014 PrinterBot Simple Makers Kit is $349 from PrinterBot plus tax, shipping and if you're outside the United States, imports and all that stuff. If you're in Germany or Europe, you can also get the Makers Kit for €425, Euros, including tax, from 3 Link to that is in the description. And as far as the pricing goes, I think it's pretty reasonable for what you get. But if you've even got the tiniest bit of extra budget to spend, you really shouldn't be looking at the PrinterBot Simple Makers Kit. Even PrinterBot themselves are offering a significant upgrade, the PrinterBot Simple Metal, for not that much extra cash at just $539 or 625 euros, which gets your metal frame and connector parts, stiffer axes and a bigger print envelope. Oh, and it gets rid of the zip ties. So there you have it, that's my review of the 2014 PrinterBot Simple Makers Kit. Thanks for watching. If you want to stay updated as I release new videos, please hit the subscribe button below. And let me know in the comments what your experiences are with the PrinterBot line of 3D printers.